Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us, as always, is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie-related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And I know what you're all thinking, it's Super Bowl week, and you're right, it is. It's coming this weekend. <laughs> also here, John Schnepp. I don't know what he's talking about. I can care less about Super Bowl or whatever that is. That where everybody eats out of a giant bowl? It's like cereal. Yes, is that what Super that's Bowl? Exactly what it makes is. a lot of sense. I just heard they show cool trailers. Whatever. Also here, Christian Harlow. I am the grammar police, and you could not care less, my friend. <laughs> um, in regards to my I, people were asking because was I going to be hungover because they saw me periscoping karaoke? I am fine. Yes, you're fine. You know what is funny though? Speaking interesting. It's it's Super Bowl week, right? But it's funny how it has evolved over the last six, seven years to now, it's it's a huge event now on the movie fan calendar. Yep, right. Like Oscars, uh, when the next Marvel film's coming out, Super Bowl because the greatest trailers of the year generally, at least there is no single day of the year where more highly anticipated trailers all drop at once. And it looks right. like uh, this year's not gonna be any different. Good shot, but look, there's, there's rumblings that we might see a, uh, a Rogue One trailer during that time. I have heard that. Disney is keeping, we'll get to the story a little yeah. bit later, so I'll shut up right now. Let's go over to Ashley, all right. who's much more intelligent. <laughs> all right, well, it's Monday, which means it's time for our weekly box office report, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. Coming in at number one this week is the new animated film, Kung Fu Panda 3, opening with $41 million. <clears throat> in second spot is Leonardo DiCaprio's The Revenant, earning $12.4 million. Third spot went to Star Wars The Force Awakens, making an additional $10.78 million to bring its seven-week total to over $895 million domestically and $1.98 billion worldwide. Coming in fourth place this weekend is the new Chris Pine film The Finest Hours, making just over $10.3 million. And rounding out the top five is the comedy Ride Along 2, making just over $8.3 million. <clears throat> John. What stands out to you in this week's box office report? It's this. I hate you all. Okay. Um. <laughs> Give me a break. You guys don't see her, but like a pre-production meeting, she's like the cigars every yeah. night. I know. Yeah. Just she sounded like, like Ludo from Labyrinth. <laughs> Ludo. Give me another lozenge. Uh -huh. Ashley, don't hurt me. Uh -huh. Give me another lozenge, I say. Step. Movie talk. Uh -huh. three makes <laughs> becomes the third largest January opening of all time. Uh, obviously, it was going to crush the box office this weekend. No big surprise there. Uh, so that's cool. Star Wars increasing its lead as the number one domestic film of all time with 895. Looking doubtful it's going to hit that one billion mark at this point. There, about three weeks ago, I was like, you know, for the longest time I said it wouldn't hit a billion domestic, but then about three weeks ago, I was like, I think it might. Uh, no, we were probably wrong. But still, by far now, the biggest domestic hit of all time. Unfortunately, the ones that really stand out to me are the ones that did not do so well. Um, you know, for us, now, Fifty Shades of Black opened in ninth, mm -hmm. and you might think, oh, that's horrible. Yeah, but remember, Fifty Shades of Black is a little spoof boom movie that they probably, I'm not going to be shocked to find out they did it for like four million bucks. And they made six million bucks on their opening weekend. Right. So I'm thinking if I'm the producers of Fifty Shades of Black, I'm like, job well done. So I, yes, ninth doesn't sound good, but really if you think about it, this was a small film with, a, with almost no marketing, like very, very little marketing, but they marketed it in a smart way, made over six million bucks opening weekend, does well. But... Jane got a gun. Yeah. Comes in 17th place on its opening. Week. Now, granted, it wasn't a super wide release. It opened in how many theaters? It says in 1,200 theaters. So it's a lot. Of, it opened in a lot of theaters uh, with an average per screen average of $664, and it only made $800,000. Now, granted, they didn't push a lot of marketing on the film, but it's just weird because I remember like two years ago when we first started talking about Jane got a gun. There was all that drama surrounding it. Director leaves, 15 different actors change positions and all this kind of stuff. Natalie Portman's passion project. You know, she had Brian, uh, Bradley Cooper on there, gone. Jude Law on there, gone. Joel Edgerton, who was in one role, switched over another role. Hugh McGregor comes in. All, I mean, it was all this kind of stuff. And we were watching it so closely. And now two years later, it just kind of crawls into the 1,200 screens, makes under a million dollars. So that's right. that's the one that really unfortunately stands out to me. Anyway, Schnapp, what about you? Yeah, I was singing the Janie got a gun earlier because I only thought it was it was released in like eight theaters. Yeah. But 1,200 theaters? Yeah, apparently. 
Yeah, that's bad. I mean, that's no. that's not like oh, Our it's professional a, analysis. Yeah, limited uh, limited bad. release. This is really bad. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. When I saw the trailers, I felt once again like you know, for me, like when you show way too much in the trailer, where even a, a small kid could put together the sequence of events because you basically showed the entire movie in certain un rearranged. It, it, it's just like. Just don't do that, especially when you have a Western. A lot of things, tie, you know, key into, you know, maybe that final scene. We don't necessarily need to see that if we're going to see the movie. It's just, it, at least for myself, I don't like seeing those final scenes in trailers. But, uh, yeah, that's the one that sticks out to me the most. I mean, all the rest of them, like, yeah, it makes sense that the finest hours didn't really do that great. It did okay. Because it's just kind of a, one of those middle of the road films. Like if you're into those like bio stories, it feels more like that should have been on like maybe a, pay, a cable channel or something like TNT as opposed to a big, big movie. That's what it. That's what it felt like to me when I was watching the trailer for The Finest Hours. It just felt like, is that going to be on like TNT or something? Oh, it's a movie. You know, it never struck me as a big film. I I, I had the totally different reaction. Yeah. I thought it. I thought it looked great. I liked. More than you or Mark, when we were all at D23 and they showed the finest hour oh, stuff, finest I hour. actually walked out really kind of encouraged by it. I thought it looked great, but it turned out to be kind of a middle of the road mm. movie. You know, it, it turned out to be what you thought it looked like. Right. Um, I ended up liking it, but it, it could have been and should have been a lot better, especially when you consider the remarkable true story behind it. And anyway, Christian, what about you? What stands out to you about the box office? Well, first, support? I got to give credit to Kung Fu Panda and because, you know, yeah. I've been saying, oh, you know, January coming out, what does that mean? Does that mean it stinks? And regardless, you know, what, because I think the reviews have been okay yep. for it. Um, it, it, it did its job. It was a smart move to put it in January because there wasn't much out at this moment. They're catching Revenant on kind of whatever it's the third, fourth week, and Star Wars is on its way out. So this was a good move for Kung Fu Panda. So that that to me, uh, the fact that it made forty was is a good sign um, for that franchise in general. Jane got a gun because. Jane Got a Gun is a movie that I don't think was marketed well at all, regardless no, of the trailer at all. Well, no. Like because we had to watch the trailer. That's what we do. My wife and I were deciding to see something this week, and we didn't wind up going to see anything. But the t choices were between Bad Grandpa, uh, uh, Dirty Grandpa, and um, Jane Got a Gun, and she didn't know what either one was. And she saw the trailer, she's like, "Oh, that looks pretty good," but she had never heard of it before. Then I also think it was a misstep. You have Ewan McGregor. Uh, Edgerton and Natalie Portman, the Star Wars cast reuniting, and uh, you kind of put that together, going, "Oh yeah, they should have, they should have tried to do, did, did the same thing that With Star Wars being in theaters right that's now. What they they should have done. It would have been gimmicky, but sometimes but you have to, are good. You, you, well, gimmick could have helped the movie. They made yeah. eight hundred thousand dollars. I'll yeah. tell you that. So that to me is a big one because it doesn't. And, and Dennis saw it and said it was fine, like a cable movie. Right. A fine cable movie doesn't should deserve to make more than eight hundred thousand dollars in the week. There are movies that stink to high heaven. Shit rats and make a lot of money. So anyway, Jane got a gun. To Would me. that be too, just too corny to be like a long time ago in a western? In a western, far, yeah. far, far away. Yeah, just any kind of little. Yeah. But yeah. even in, yeah. in a trailer, if you did bad. something, is give me just as a you know because sometimes in a trailer they'll flash up a quick quote from somebody. Like if they just flash up a quick quote, uh, a mini reunion of a, a mini Star Wars. Yep, reunion, sure. Just plant Star Wars in there, and you probably could have doubled your box right, office. Right. Like that gimmicky, yes, but sometimes gimmicks yep. are used, used because they gimmick. work. Yeah. You need it, yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next? Over the weekend, the 22nd Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards were given out in Los Angeles, and the winners in the film categories were as follows. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role, Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant. Outstanding performance by a female actor in a leading role, Brie Larson for Room. Outstanding performance by a male actor in a supporting role, Idris Elba for Beasts of No Nation. Outstanding performance by a female actor in a supporting role, Alicia Vikander for The Danish Girl. And finally, outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture, which is the SAG version of the best picture, went to Spotlight. Christian, were there any surprises in the SAG results? Yeah, I'll tell you what, because <laughs> even though he's been winning the awards and he won the Golden Globe, Leonardo DiCaprio, I'm starting to change my tune, man. Like I was, I was saying it for a long time. I still don't think he's going to do it. I think they're going to give it to Fassbender. I think they're going to give it to Eddie Redmayne. I'm changing my tune. I think that he's going to wind up because of this. I think he's going to wind up winning the Oscar, and I think that this is the, that he's winning all of these awards, including the SAG one. It was a little bit of a shock to me that he won this one as well, um, and I'm also shocked that um, that Idris Elba won as well too. I think that I w I didn't. I mean, because Stallone was up for that one as well, um, <clears throat> and so he's another guy who's been winning them all. I thought maybe that he would take that one. So those are the two. The other ones, I think Vikander's going to wind up winning the Oscar. I think that even though you don't get, I think they should do an ensemble award for Oscars. 
kind of a no-brainer that Spotlight would get that one. So, but to me, the two that stand out are DiCaprio and uh, Elba. Um, not a lot. Of, I'm not surprised that DiCaprio won the SAG. The, this, the SAGs are. I, I felt like this was a very friendly award for Leo to win. But that being said, a year and a half ago, when they announced this movie called The Revenant, Alejandro's directing it. You got Tom Hardy and you got Leonardo DiCaprio about it's a story of revenge, bear attack, survival, based uh, like at least loosely based on a true story, blah, blah. I remember on Movie Talk, I said, I don't care. I'm calling it right now. Leonardo DiCaprio wins his Academy Award mm -hmm. in 2016 for this movie. This is the one. Now, a few months ago, I changed my tune. Like you, Fast Bender. I mean, and for me, if I was handing out the Academy Award, it would be close, but I personally give it to Fassbender. And all the early awards that were coming out, like the um, uh, the AP and the uh, New York Film Critics Association, the Los Angeles Film Critics, it was all going Fassbender's way. But a lot of times award season is like basketball, man. Yeah. It's about momentum. Mm -hmm. And right now, Leonardo DiCaprio is carrying in all the momentum. Like if you'd asked me a month ago, I would have said Leo's gonna win the SAG. Uh, if you'd asked me about the Golden Globes, I would say it's irrelevant, who cares? But he's picked up a couple other awards as well, and it really does feel right now like the momentum is going his way. If I had to put money on it, if I had to put money on it, I'd probably still put it on Fastbender, really? but I am no, but I, I'm no, I'm not going to put money on it now because I think it's that close. I think there is now a better shot today of Leo winning this award than not. True story. Talking to a girlfriend of mine the other day, <clears throat> and she was asking me about some movies because she goes, to, she's one of these people who goes to like twelve movies a year, right? So doesn't see Casual all of them. Fan, yeah. Casual movie fan. So she asked, "Hey, is that um, uh, Idris Elba hip hop movie any good?" I'm like, "Idris Elba hip hop movie." And I'm thinking, "What has he got coming out?" I'm like. I, I'm not. I said, when does it come out? She goes, I think it came out a while ago on uh, on Netflix. Are you talking about Beasts of No Nation? She goes, what's the name of it? I said, Beasts of No Nation. She goes, oh, I always thought of Beats of No Nation. I thought it was a movie about hip hop. I'm like, oh my god. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> don't say her name. Give her a little pat on the head. <laughs> you know who you are. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, speaking of uh, Beasts of No Nation, that's a. Uh that's one of the ones that should have been in the Oscars. That's how I feel about it. I feel like when those Oscar nominations came out, because it was a Netflix movie and people still trying to get used to this kind of Netflix moving in, yeah. just like Amazon is moving into uh, the theatrical release game, I think it got shafted. And that's why a lot of, you know, I mean, you'll see some more diversity in the SAG Awards than you will in the True. Oscar Awards simply because there is no diversity that you can choose from in the Oscar Awards. Yeah, right to, to the SAG actors, a Screen Actors Guild acting role, whether it's on YouTube or on Netflix right. or in a motion picture to the Screen Actors Guild, that just means act, working yeah. actors and they don't so, care. And Idris did an incredible job, so he completely deserved it. Uh, and you know, I would have liked to have seen him pick up an Oscar for it. I think you guys are right. I think Leo is gonna win the Oscar for it. And I think his his uh, his portrayal in the Revenant is Oscar worthy. I don't think the Revenant itself is a, is one of the best films that came out in 2015 for sure, at least in my opinion. But Leo's performance is incredible. So yeah, I mean all, everything looks like you know like Brie Larson, also her portrayal in Room that was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. She completely has that in the bag. Yeah, I so, so I think the SAG Awards are, are just right on track. I stand corrected. Apparently, Stallone was not nominated for Best for, for the SAG. For SAG yeah. yeah, and I, I, I kind of thought he should have been. Yeah. But regardless. Yeah. Um, all right, folks, we've reached that part of the show now for Buy or Sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Ashley's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. Then those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So Ashley, what do we got? It looks like it's going to be a Deadpool kind of Super Bowl weekend. According to a report in The Hollywood <laughs> Reporter, Fox is not only bringing a new Deadpool spot to air during the big game, but they're also taking over a food truck where Ryan Reynolds will be handing out chimichangas as well as having a screening on this Saturday night, among other festivities. Schnepp, do you buy or sell the strategy of Fox doing so much marketing at the Super Bowl? <laughs> mm, I'm just imagining those chimichangas right now. I'm sorry. What what, what was the question? Mm. Too much marketing or no? Oh no, not enough. <laughs> I, I I can't have more than enough of this. I can have this forever. I can't have more, more than, than enough than of this. Enough. Yeah, that okay. means I can have more than enough of this. <laughs> Wait, can I have less than more I, than enough? Let's of leave this? it up to the philosophers. I could right. not care less about that. I want more chimichangas. <laughs> is all I can really say. 
I want more Deadpool. I think it's a great marketing strategy. I'd love to see him do a halftime dance number with uh, Rihanna. That's what I'd like to see. Him, so. This continues to prove that this Deadpool marketing campaign may be the single greatest marketing campaign we have ever seen. Because not only, not only are they a, you know, uh, appealing to the loser geek boys, AKA the people sitting at this table, mm -hmm. not only are they appealing to us, remember a little while back, they pulled out an ad on the frickin' Bachelor. They right. pulled out an ad on they the- sure did. It was <laughs> so freaking great. It was so great. I mean, who would have ever thought, you know what, there's gonna be a comic book movie coming out, they're gonna put an ad on The Bachelor. That's Never. stupid. But they did it in such a way with him, hey ladies, and he's holding yeah. the roses, showing Ryan, uh, I was gonna say Gosling, showing Ryan Reynolds walk around <laughs> shirtless. So they started appealing to that demographic. And all of a sudden, you got like, the women in my life are talking about this. I went home to Canada. My sisters are talking about Deadpool. They never would have talked about right. Deadpool before. And now what are they doing? They're going after the freaking John Schnepps of the world. That's They're right. going after the non-sports fans. Oh, sorry, I take that back. They're going after the me's, the other half of the me's. <laughs> They're going after the sports fans who may not traditionally totally. be you know, fans of this. And they, <laughs> him being there with a food truck serving chimichangas, apparently they're gonna have some of the NFLers gonna be at this screening as well. They have just approached this marketing campaign with a level of elegance and power that I have just, and, and intelligence, that I just cannot believe they have done. This is a brilliant move and I cannot wait to see what kind of a trailer they are specifically tailoring right. for the Super Bowl audience. This is going to be great. Anyway, what do you think? This is a huge buy because it's not just going after the sports fans because the Super Bowl, like you said before, how many of you guys watching right now who don't give a crap about sports are gonna be tuning into the football game for either because your friends are having a party or because yeah. you want to see the trailers. Yep. Or now, because you heard of the Deadpool thing, you're going to watch that. But it's also going to reach out to people who have no idea who it is. But I could see that meeting, the initial meeting of the Fox executives going, well, well I don't think a lot of people really, like demographics besides comic book fans know about it. We got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> worry about it. We're, we're going to figure it out. Yeah. We, have, we have a way to market this thing because of who Deadpool is as a character. You can't do this with any, any other property. It's because of A, Ryan Reynolds, and B, who Deadpool is, that you can do this with the chimichangas and the, the, the Bachelor, even that Bachelor ad, like Deadpool would do that. You understand that he would do that. Ryan Reynolds has been embracing this character for so long and wanting to finally bring this version of him. And another great thing is the fact that Fox is starting to screen this movie already. And yes. the normally an embargo will, will lift a few days before. Right. It's lifting about a week earlier. And because, we're all going to talk about it. And we're it. all going to talk yeah. about it because they are proud of it and they know. So this is a good sign and the fact that they're able now to broadcast on the, one of the biggest events. Uh, yeah, the big buy. You got to wonder if uh, if at some point Fox is, or if the Super Bowl will kind of say, say here, you know, yesterday and they're going to show the food truck outside the stadium or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Show, show Ryan around <laughs> serving up chimichangas. And you know, the, they have certain screens. Matter of fact, for those who don't know, Collider is actually hosting a special screening uh, tomorrow night of Deadpool yep, here right. in LA. There are a couple of us at this table might be seeing the movie this week. But yeah, and then um, and then we'll have a whole lot more to talk about. All right, what's next? Reports have emerged that Masters of Sex star Michael Sheen has joined the voice cast of the upcoming Pixar film Finding Dory, a sequel to the wildly popular Finding Nemo. Finding Dory picks up six months after the first movie with Dory, Ellen DeGeneres, living a quiet life among the clownfishes. After going with Nemo on a class trip to see Manta Rays migrate back home, her her homesickness leads the forgetful Dory on a quest to find where she came from. Finding Dory opens in theaters on June 17th. Christian Byer saw the addition of Michael Sheen to the cast. I mean, I definitely buy him being added to the cast. He's a, he's a great talent. My question, I guess, is more to Schnepp here, too, because I just, I guess I don't understand. Isn't this movie coming out in like three or four months? Or yeah. something too. Like, does that mean that they just don't have the that character done? Is it like a small character, or can they just well, say? I, I have the perfect answer for you, Christian. They're just uh, replacing a temp track. Is okay, my guess. that's what I thought. Uh, and then just reanimating the mouth portion. That's what I thought because that to me scared me a little bit. I'm like, well, yeah. wait a minute. Like, no. this this movie's supposed to be coming out like tomorrow. <laughs> when you hear <laughs> stuff like, like this, there's one of two answers. Yeah. Number one, they already had him in the bag, and they just decided to announce it now, and they recorded him like two years ago. Okay, so that's that's more that's probable is okay. they actually just had him already recorded. It's all done. But now they're letting everyone know and that they're, he's Now part. they're just going to start, yeah. and they're going to okay. start announcing other people. You'll see probably in another, next month they're going to announce another person. The following month they'll like drop two more names right. than the poster. So I think that's kind of the, the procedure. I don't think, 
I mean, the only thing, the only other thing I think of is that they either replaced someone or Who wasn't had, working or something. Yeah, or had a temp track, and they finally cast somebody that they were like, yeah. we're just looking for that one voice. But more than likely, they already had him cast, and they're just dropping the name right now. Yeah, uh, I love Michael Sheen. Ever since he was like, what was he, Lucian in Underworld? The, yeah. Like he goes from being like the werewolf king to being the duty is in Tron mm -hmm. to, to being Frost from Frost and Nixon. So yeah, and then he was the that. prime minister yeah. and like all that. Kind of, he is so versatile. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredible. It's never a mistake to add talent. I don't know how stoked I am to just hear his voice doing one of the fishes in mm -hmm. the sea, whatever. But hey, adding Michael Sheen, it's a good thing. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a buy. All right, what's next? Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn is one of the more active and prolific social media users in the business, and over the last few days he's been answering some questions from fans via Twitter. One of the things that Gunn revealed is that he's already cast both Star-Lord's father and the villains for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Schnapp, do you buy or sell that Gunn is telling the truth and has actually cast these major roles? Yeah, why would he lie about it? They just had a big table, <laughs> table read, and it's like, yeah, you know, just... I'm going to lie about stuff and say I, I cast all these people. We're still looking for him. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of people are also conjecturing, is the is Star-Lord's dad and the main villain one in the same? Could be. could Or they could be separate. It's hard to tell, but it's cool to know that they're all cast. I mean, don't, they start shooting like this month or yeah. at the end of this month or something. So, yeah, I totally buy is what he's talking about. Christian? Uh, I buy it as well, too. And I Because James, uh, James Gunn, we've talked about like, I think last week, is that Guy knows when to talk and when not to talk yes, he and, does. and yeah, how to so market. Good at it. He's so good at it. He knows how to market his movies. I also think that this is, for me, a confirmation it's Kurt Russell because he was the last guy to, to be kind of rumored up there right around the same time that Gunn was talking about Star Lord's dad. So I think it's going to be Kurt Russell. I think he signed on. Um, that's purely speculation, me just guessing and hoping. Um, but I don't think. Uh, I don't think that it is the same. I don't think he's going to be the villain. I think it's going to be different, and I think we'll get a, a an announcement of who the villain is pretty soon as well, too. Yeah, I, I buy this as well. But you know what? The funny thing is, I'm a little bit opposite from you on the Kurt Russell thing because uh, before yesterday, I would have said it, my money's on Kurt Russell being cast. But now that that story got out there, and he's being kind of forthright on Twitter and say I, I've cast the dad and not. Why not confirm that it was Kurt Russell? Now I'm wondering, maybe it's somebody else. But he didn't confirm anybody. He didn't confirm the villains no, no, either. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But but the Kurt Russell story was out there. True. So it makes me go, maybe it's not. But I hope it is. Though. Yeah. I hope it is. What this really, stand, really stands out to me is this, though, is that we've said on this show before a few times that a lot of times when you have a role coming up in a movie and we don't know who the actor is and all the speculation is going on, more times than not, They've already cast the role and it's probably been cast for a long time. By the time you hear it, that dude's been that character, has been cast as that character for months normally. I think this kind of goes towards point proving that as well. If it is Kurt Russell, he's probably been signed on for four or five weeks already. Right. And they just haven't announced it yet. So I think we're probably going to get those announcements, I'm guessing, before they start shooting. Before they start shooting, I think we're going to get the, uh, if not a full cast announcement, I think we're going to hear who's been cast to play the villains, who's been cast to play Star's dad. Fans think it's Al Pacino. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As Ego, the hey, living planet. baby <laughs> doll, what's going on? I want to see Ego <laughs> played by Al Pacino. That would be great. I know he's not <laughs> played by Why Al Pacino. <laughs> that would be freaking awesome. I cannot wait for this movie. I still remember, uh, who goes plans their night around going to see what basically equates to a long trailer. I did that. Before Guardians of the Galaxy came out, they had this special night down at the El Capitan. Come down and get tickets and watch 10 minutes of Guardians of the Galaxy. I can, apparently this kind of loser does. So I went down and watched the, the, it wasn't the first 10 minutes, it was just a 10 minute chunk. It was the prison scene uh, mm -hmm. when they were on that prison. Yeah. Went down and watched that. I remember going, wow. Like they've they've captured something really special here. I hope the movie falls through. And that movie was such a delight. Yes, totally. I used the D word. It was a delight. <laughs> I loved it. I cannot wait for part two. This is gonna be awesome. All right, what's next? At the aforementioned Screen Actors Guild Awards, actress Gwendolyn Christie, who played Captain Phasma in Star Wars The Force Awakens, said that she will in fact be in the next Star Wars movie. John, do you buy or sell Gwendolyn Christie returning for Star Wars Episode Eight? Here's the interesting thing about this, okay? So I watched the interview. It was on the carpet of the SAGs, and Gwendolyn Christie says, I will be, I will be in the next Star Wars movie. 
Now, a lot of people, and I totally understand why, this is me railing against uh, how websites title things, because I totally get why they did this. A lot of the headlines are, Gwendolyn Christie confirms returning as Captain Phasma for Star Wars Episode Eight, And I totally get why that's the headline. I totally do, because that's the first thing through my head as well. But then I watched the interview again, and then I watched it again. I'm like, follow me here. She never said she was coming back for Episode Eight. She said she's going to be in the next Star Wars movie. Probably that means episode eight, but the next Star Wars movie coming out is actually Rogue One. She also never actually said she's coming back as Captain Phasma. She said she is coming back to be this. Let me just explore the possibility here. I don't really believe this, but let me throw it out there as a possibility. Remember, Captain Phasma was apparently, we never saw it happen, thrown down a... I'm beginning to spoilers there. We don't know what happens to Phasma at the end of Star Wars Episode Seven, so we could see Phasma back. But... Could there be a possibility here that we don't see Captain Phasma back, but we never saw Gwendolyn Christie's face in Star Wars Episode Seven? Could there be a possibility here that Gwendolyn Christie is coming back into the Star Wars universe, but she won't be Captain Phasma? Maybe she'll be playing another character altogether. And maybe it's not even Episode Eight. Maybe it's Rogue One. Once again, I'm not saying that that's what the case is. I'm not saying I necessarily believe that, but just her response was so kind of vague. It's like got me asking questions. Christian, what do you think about this whole thing? It's a great theory, Super Shadow. I just don't see it happening. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't either. I'm just throwing it out there. I know it's 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 uh it's it's a cool theory, but it just I you know, I think she's referencing Phasma for sure. And I think that even Kathleen Kennedy let it slip a few uh, like a month ago that Phasma was gonna return. And in regards to how she returns, <clears throat> like you said, we didn't see what they said that they did to her. So there's any way that she she could have gotten out of there. There's ways that we could even see it or hear about it in a novel. It's fine. But if that if going off your theory, there's a character in the in the comics and in the in the <laughs> books that I'd love to see Ray Sloan that she'd be perfect for for mm. that would actually fit into the Rogue One timeline. But again, I just don't think it's gonna happen. But I think that Phasma should come back. I think that I buy it because I want to see this character do way more. She was the most underused character in that movie. Looked the coolest, did the least. Mm -hmm. So I'd absolutely like to see her come back. And I think she's going to be the main uh, antagonist for Finn and mm -hmm. Poe. Yeah, it's funny because my the first time I caught wind of this story, it was a buddy of mine who's a producer tweeting out, uh, Captain Phasma coming back to episode eight to continue to do nothing. But anyway, <laughs> so anyway, Schnapp, hey, your thought on I'm going to buy that she's coming back, and I think that you know, just like Boba Fett, they'll give like they'll sprinkle a little bit more of her in in Episode Eight, uh, and maybe a little bit more in Episode Nine. But she's not going to be one of the main characters. She's always been like a side villain, and that's what I mean. That's how they established her. I don't think they established her enough in Force Awakens, uh, at least as far as all of us were all disappointed right. in the way that she was portrayed. So I think that you know. Kathleen Kennedy and everyone else, Johnson probably have heard all the fans say we'd like a little bit more. So, however, you know, come on, who hasn't seen Force Awakens? Yeah, yeah, so be careful. This. Well, yeah, right, you know, right, it's right, still right. theater, still you, number three. All right, all right, you know, I you, say, well, you know what it is. Also, I think though, she'll, too. obviously she'll be back, and they'll let you know how she got back. Right, and I think that you're right, though. I think that the thing is that they're definitely listening to fans and knowing how much she was underused and how much they want people wanted to see more of her. Traitor! But, but what we have to realize yeah. also is that that character, A, was never meant to be, when it initially was created, wasn't a woman. Right. Um, right. And then they, it, it was also, did had a much smaller role and a lot less to do. And you see because of who they cast, now it's like, well, let's, she looks really cool. The design's really cool. Let's make her, let's make her more relevant. And I think that's what they're gonna do in eight. Oh, it looked like a character you could market, and they certainly did yes. market the character mm -hmm. a lot. All right, folks, we reached out part of the show now for Mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address in the show, just email us anytime, and we'll get to your questions here Monday through Friday on the show. Maybe we'll get to them on weekend mailbags. But listen, if you're watching our show live right now, and I know there's thousands of you are watching us live, you can also get in some live questions by tweeting to us right now at Collider Video. So make sure you're following us on Twitter, tweet in some questions, and Ashley will pick out a few when we get to the end of the show. But now let's get to the mailbag questions. So Ashley, what's in there? Grobar Jug writes, hey guys, I have been following you since good old AMC days. My question is about Batman versus Superman. The movie is so close, but we haven't heard anything about Jim Gordon. Do you think he is dead or are they saving him for a solo Batman movie? I think, we have to brace ourselves for the possibility 
there may be no Jim Gordon in this particular DC Cinematic Universe. Might be, as you mentioned in the email, depending on how long Batman's been doing his gig and how young or old they're going to say Jim Gordon was when Batman started doing his gig, that maybe he's was killed on duty or retired, or, or maybe there never was a Jim Gordon. Because um, when you think about uh, the whole s system that's sitting up now and you look at the market campaign, it is pretty clear we're not going to get a, a Jim Gordon. But even if there is a Jim Gordon in this DC Cinematic Universe, it makes sense that there would be no Jim Gordon in Batman v Superman. It looks like most of this movie is going to take place in Metropolis. It's going to probably take place on Superman's ho home turf. It's about Batman and Superman. We don't need to add even more characters to it. So I'm not surprised he's not there. I think it's appropriate that he's not there. As far as how they'll use him moving forward... If I had to put money on it, I say we'll get a Jim Gordon in the standalone Batman movies, but probably not before. That's just my thought on it. Schnepp, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I mean, we'll see Jim Gordon in the Batman that with Ben Affleck, and it'll be obviously before he retired because they're saying he's coming out of retirement to deal with Superman, or he's like left the biz for a while of vigilanteism. So I think, yeah, Jim Gordon is not going to exist in this film. Uh, whether he's dead or retired, we'll find out. Do we know for sure, or, or is more specul is this speculation in regards to that it's going to be a prequel to Batman v Superman? No, we don't know. No, okay. We don't know. I, I think I don't think it's going to be a prequel. There are a lot of people like Schnepp and yeah. others who think there will be. See, I don't think there will. I don't think it will be. And I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I think it'd be kind of cool. Um, but I think that um, Gordon. I think you keep him out of Batman v Superman for sure. But I don't want him to say that he's dead for the for the reasoning of because it's a good role to fill with some. A really good actor as well too. Brian so, Cranston. Yeah, you know. So I mean, so, so I think that if the Batman standalone Batman movie, let's say he comes out of retirement for Batman v Superman, then that standalone movie is him doing something out on his own. You know, like kind of same thing that Captain America does, right? Right. You need a, a Gordon in there, I think. So I, regardless whether it's a prequel or not, so I don't think you mention that he's dead. Um, you just just you don't, don't mention, mention him at, him at all. all. Yeah. yeah. Or, you just, I mean, because Batman's going to be in Justice League, you know, it's, it seems like the Batman of of now is going to be pretty busy. So if they are doing the Batman standalone, it makes sense to go back into the past. And that's how you can delve into a lot of situations, origin of the Joker, a lot of these other situations. How many years that, back would you go? I would go 10 years back. And you could probably still do that with yeah, Affleck. Cause, yeah, because they grade him up for this film. They sure. Just, it's sure. Just very easy. He's, he's young looking. So. Yeah. Number no cool. interest in a prequel. I, want, no. I just want to see them move this story forward because you're you're going to be going back with Wonder Woman. Like, is every but standalone one going to be going backwards? You, I'm more with you that I'd rather not see a prequel, but you could make a prequel work. I think that if you did it like ten years beforehand, too, where it's like every standalone Batman movie can't be a prequel. It's like that one to see what he was doing ten years before, how all the events that we learn about in Batman v right. Superman happened. And we get like some stuff like because there, if there's questions after Batman v Superman, like oh man, I wonder how that went down too. Even if the mystery is there a little bit, so you're like oh well, that's cool. They told us a little bit, but then there's more of like a setup going. I'd actually like to see that. Then that sets that up, and then once we get further into, you figure there'd be two or three at least. Um, Plus, it won't really be a it won't be a prequel after they're done. Like just like how kids nowadays watch one, two, three, four, five, six, and now seven of Star Wars. Right. It's just we'll be seeing them out of order. But I think it's really important to establish the Batman before Superman and Wonder Woman and the Justice League all like get you know well known on planet Earth because then it could just be like. You know, Batman would be like, I got a problem, call in Superman. Right. <laughs> like everybody's <laughs> lasered. It's like Especially because we have visions of Christian Bale as sure. that Batman doing that stuff back then. We don't know Ben Affleck's Batman. Right now we don't know him at all, but right, but we won't know him as that Batman that wasn't retired. So it would be interesting. I still am kinda I think hoping that I get it we get him after the events of Batman v Superman. But I, I certainly think that could be interesting. All right, what's next? Alex Espinal writes, big fan, I watch every day. I read this article about a new app that sells movie tickets in which the prices would vary depending on availability. This would ultimately push for theaters to fill more seats. As a New Yorker who pays premium price for what the rest of the nation calls regular movie ticket prices, I would love for this to happen. Thoughts, thanks, and bring on the filthy. Yeah, if I'm remembering it right, there's, there's an app out there called Adam or Adam or, or something along that lines where basically it's... It serves several functions. One is to help groups of people coordinate buying tickets together to go and see a movie, make sure you get your seats together and all that kind of stuff. And that's actually pretty cool. It's this other part of the functionality that they're talking about that, to me, I'm a little bit unsure about. So basically, the idea is this. The closer you get to showtime, let's say we were all going to go see um, The Revenant later today, right? But the movie starts in two hours and the theater's like, holy crap, we still have 70% empty seats for this showing of The Revenant. 
the app would then kind of kick in at certain time frames and say, okay, still, if there's this many percentage seats still available by this amount of time before the movie, drop the prices on those available tickets to such and such a price, right? So maybe an hour before the movie, there's 60% cheap uh, seats left. And so they say, all right, take it for five bucks instead of 12 or something like that, right? It's an interesting concept. And I would have to see how it would flesh out before I form a real opinion. I have a couple of concerns though. Here are the concerns that I have for it. Number one, it could be establishing a model for basis of increasing ticket prices instead of decreasing. Because look at the opposite side of that coin, two hours still 70% of the tickets, right? Well, what if it's like, gosh, it's still four days before Kung Fu Panda 4 debuts and it's already at like 95% capacity. Let's jack up those prices because it's supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So instead of actually being a device that would ultimately usher in an era where prices of tickets could drop, it might actually op usher in something that's the opposite where we see surge pricing and prices of tickets go up. I don't think I like that. The other part of that is this. So us three jackasses decide to go see The Revenant in, in two hours and like, all right, yeah, because 70% tickets are still unsold. They dropped at 50%. Yay. But Ashley was going with us and she bought her tickets yesterday and she bought her tickets for the full $12. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, that, man? That's a great commercial. It's a great commercial. <laughs> Actually, gonna be pissed. Shit. It's like you guys paid how much for your tickets? She's gonna go to the mall. How come they got their tickets for seven bucks and I right. had to pay five bucks more? Once again, these might be problems that these guys are already thinking about. Right. So I'm I'm gonna reserve judgment until I see how this is more fleshed out. But those are the two concerns I have: that it could be used for actually an excuse to create a model that raises ticket prices. But on the other hand, it will deter people from buying movie tickets until an hour later, or screwing people who did buy early. And everybody else got their tickets for cheaper. So those are my concerns. What do you think, Christian? I have a lot of the same concerns, and I think that one of the things is that you can just see it. You can see it already that they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that you guys get cheaper tickets." But then it's gonna go from thirteen bucks a ticket, like you said, to now the tickets are gonna be twenty dollars a ticket, and then oh, and then you happen to get tickets now on sale for thirteen bucks. So you're basically paying exactly the same <laughs> what you'd be paying anyway. You can see that happening, but like you said, they're probably also ironing out those kinks, trying to make it the, the best way possible. But I think that the shit reference is the best one because it's a matter of she goes and buys it, gets all set, and then we just like, well, screw it. We'll buy it two hours before yeah, all three of our tickets bucks. cheaper than her one ticket. yeah so it's, it, it's 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 i'm curious i'm again same thing reserving judgment i want i, I want to see what happens first before i say this stinks sure I, it sounds very scalpery to me um you know mm. Like that's what, like you, what you said, it could really go down to like, instead of like, oh, save money if you buy it at the last minute to like, oh, it's like, these are all sold out, but we, we are reserving these three rows of tickets. You can only find them on Adam dot, you know, whatever it's called. Right. I don't know if they're going to do that. You're right. It's way too early to, to let, let's see how it all works out. And maybe in a year we'll be like, man, it's a, it's great and super convenient. And like, if you have like, oh, if you have a party of six, we'll sell them. If someone bought a ticket early, we'll give them that group rate or whatever. However, yeah. they might be able to work things yeah, out. Yeah. How does that work? Like, let's say, so let's say Ashley buys that ticket, right? And then she returns the ticket and then wants to buy the ticket, the, the, the cheap one. Can she do that? Well, Ashley's a smart girl. I bet you yeah, that's I what totally she would do. Yeah, I totally would do that. Genius. <laughs> totally. Yeah, that's yeah. really smart. So I like it's like I bought my this. five tickets to make sure I got my tickets. And then go to the box office. I'd like to return these. Now send them back to me! Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'll buy it. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you know what? I don't want to sound like I'm crapping on the idea. I am, I am all for any innovation or new ideas that could create a model that we could see ticket prices and movies come down a bit. I'm all for it. These are just our concerns. Yeah. Let's see how... And like we said, maybe they already have solutions to these... Let's wait a little bit and see how it plays. I know they've, they're have they opening it. They're going to be running it in some test markets mm. uh, already. I think with Cinemark and with Regal and just a couple of local markets, they're going to be test running it, work out some of those kinks. Let's see how it turns out. All right, folks, like I said, we're saved a few minutes here at the end of the show to take some of your live Twitter questions for those of you who watch us live. And by the way, we do the show live every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Los Angeles time. That's 2 p.m. New York time. So a bunch of you have been sending in some tweets. Ashley's picked some out. So Ashley, what have you picked? Michael DiCristofano writes, can you talk about Numi Rapace not being an alien, alien covenant? Can we talk about new? Yeah, this came out. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. Well, I, I, I'll say I think it makes sense because because it's not Prometheus 2 anymore. Now it's Alien Covenant. And they're kind of like jettisoning whatever the script of per Prometheus Paradise Lost or whatever that script was going to be. Yeah. 
it's now a brand new script. It's a brand new crew of people coming to find this, you know, engineer's planet. This is the outline they've already said, and they find this one uh, robotic character, David, and uh, played by Fastbender. So uh, I'm sure we'll find out what happened to the character that Nomi played, but uh, I think they're moving forward, and they're going to lock it more into the Aliens universe and less so about the outer realm of the Aliens universe. Can I ask a quick question? Because I didn't read the initial story. Are they saying... A, Numi Pace is not returning, or they did he confirm that the character itself is not returning? Both. I think it, both. They did confirm uh, both. Okay, interesting. Um, I actually really like this, and I, I, I'm a big fan of hers. I, I think she's a great actress. I just didn't happen to like any of those characters that were in in that, minus Michael Fassbender, um, in, in Prometheus, and I love the fact that we're finally going to get confirmation that it's a tie-in to the Alien franchise. That's what I wanted from Prometheus. Sure. That's what I want from these brand new characters, and I think it's a nice wash to not, because there are certainly people who enjoyed, I believe you enjoyed yeah, Prometheus. There are people who enjoyed Prometheus very much. It was certainly not a stinker, but I think that it's a way to say to everybody, a little bit of a fresh start here. Still not disregarding what we just did in Prometheus, but this is going to continue the Alien franchise and lead into the movies that you know. And here's some brand new actors to right, do it. Right, they're saying so there's okay three it. of them. Yeah, they're like I'm already cool saying we're right. doing not yeah. just one off or three, so they're creating a new Alien trilogy, so to speak. So. Yeah. All right, what's next? What do you think? Don't care, didn't like. I, I'm, I'm not as big on new pace as a lot of people, and I didn't like Prometheus, so meh. <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, Aaron writes, how many, of you, <laughs> how many of you guys have taken acting classes? I Yeah, that was my career. Yeah, well, when I was in uh, high school, I was in theater. I used to do a lot of theater. I took one or two classes when I was in college. But, uh, you know, not I'm not a thespian for by trade so I was a theater major that was oh, my thing yeah. and it, if, if you want to make fun of my acting go look check out grasping at straws part one you'll see it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, I I never have but I've got a, a number of very good friends here in town who are aspiring actors uh and I've gone to a couple of acting classes and I watch what they do and I just couldn't do it it's part of the reason I have such a huge respect for actors and what they do and what they go through to be able to do what they do and do it well uh so no I uh, I have not all right, what's actually no no wait Ashley, have you ever taken acting classes? I, I also was a theater major. Hey, hey. and I took um, classes at Groundlings. Love really? You. Yeah. Awesome. But you're so unfunny. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Rude. Rude. You are hilarious. All right, what's next? All right. Um Devon Lott writes, Will you be doing your first non spoiler and spoiler reviews of the year for Deadpool movie? Yeah, I, I, that's oh, yeah. yeah, that's I mean, I didn't have a lot of people clamoring for us to do a spoiler review of Kung Fu Panda 3. Obviously, a lot of people were interested in the movie. Just that's not one you kind of right. want to spoiler review for. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Hail Caesar. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to go see that tomorrow night. Yep. But that's not the type of movie that everybody's really clamoring for a spoiler review for. You'll see us review it probably. Uh, but Deadpool, yeah, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's the first spoiler view of the year, right? I yeah, mean, gotta be. we're going to do a non-spoiler one later this week, and yeah. then a spoiler one for when we can actually talk about yeah, it. Yeah, when the day the movie yeah. comes yeah. out, we'll do, yeah. release that. Perfect. It's, yeah, it's a no-brainer. All right, what's next? Chad Shrevis writes, if Fantastic Beasts does well, would it lead to a Harry Potter reboot? <sighs> reboot? No. New movies? I've always thought there's a possibility. Look, money talks. I don't care what people say that. Oh, no, no, JK said it, it, it doesn't matter. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Spielberg and Lucas said after Indiana Jones 3, never will there be another Indiana Jones film. Right. And we kind of wish they stuck to that. But uh, money talks. And I've always felt that at some point, JK is going to remember those great days when not two dump trucks full, full of money backed up and dumped cash over her lawn like they do right now, but the days when 10 dump trucks full of money would back up under her lawn and dump everything out. You see, those were good days. Um, I, I just got to believe that at some point it's going to happen. Fantastic Beats will do well. Now, will it be a billion dollar movie worldwide? I doubt it, but it doesn't need to be a billion dollar movie worldwide to do really well. So I think it's regardless. I think regardless of how fast, I'll, I'll go as far as saying this. I would almost wager that if Fantastic Beasts does not do well, and let's be honest, it will, but let's say it doesn't do well, I would almost think that would increase the chances 
that a prop that proper Harry Potter sequels would come because they're going to go, yeah, we got to get back on this Potter money train. And clearly it's not just the Potter universe. It's Potter. And we got to get back to that. So um, that's kind of how I'm seeing it right now. I might change my mind by tomorrow, though. I anyway, know. Christian, what do you think? No reboot. Don't reboot. You don't have to reboot. No, be because, no, you don't. No, not necessary because you can get this. And I think is this set for a trilogy? This the Fantastic, Fantastic Beats? Beats? Yeah, they're talking about the, so. yeah. You would assume yeah. if the first one's it's popular, quadrilogy. makes forty million opening yeah. weekend. There's no, there's you, would there's no trilogy. you would assume you're going to see a lot more of it. Eddie Redmayne looks like he fits right into that universe. Really so does. I'm super excited about that, and I hear great things from just little previews that people have seen. Um, but I'm with you, man. I want to see those stinking kids as adults, the Harry yeah. Potter and the rest of them. Yeah, I want to see them later on whether or not they're sending their kids to hogwarts and they've got to figure stuff out and i think they were to i mean look at look at the force awakens you can totally do it i mean yeah. it's, you're looking at one of the most popular franchises of all time if jk rowling can come up with a story with harry and and ron and hermione and all them and tell us 20 30 years later i'm, I'm in you know she's gonna do it yeah i mean look at lucas he was like we're done the sixth one it's over i've told my story cut to we just saw the seventh one that was something we thought we'd never see right. so I, I wouldn't put any wagers against seeing like the adult Potter and uh, his friends with their kids in another 20 years. Right. Why not? Right. It would be great. I'm sure everyone will want to do it, especially Radcliffe and everyone else will be like, yeah, let's put the, get those wands back like 20 years later. Yeah. Everyone will be down for it. I want to see fantastic beats. With, uh, with Idris Elba, like riding, yeah. he's riding a dragon, rapping to so laser swords. I'm on fire. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see that hip hop movie. <laughs> All right, what's next? Josh Feldman writes: Any actors that you once thought were the same person? Yes, I have to think. Um, about. okay, for, for limited time, this is going back years, but Kurt Russell and um, uh, uh, Dennis Quaid. Then Dennis Quaid. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, I had Felicity Jones recently and Alicia Vikander for a little bit. And now I'm starting to kind of piece them piece them away. <laughs> I had Emily Blunt and Eva Green just for a, yeah. about oh, a six can, month yeah, period with maybe a Rachel Weiss sub thing flipping around. But that's about all I can remember. There, there are other ones for sure. I just can't. I, I, I would every once in a while. I, would, I don't know why I would, but I would I would often confuse for a period of time John Le Lezugamo and uh, Michael Pena for whatever stupid reason. No justification for that. Uh, yeah, so those are two really big ones to me. All right, what's next? Nick Michalak writes, if you could take one movie car on a test drive, which would it be? No DeLoreans allowed. Oh, All right. All right. Keep good, up good, work. good asterisk right. on that. Right. Right. The original Batmobile. I'm on it. That's, that's what I would do. Oh man! I go the weapons buggy and Megaforce. Nice. That's the one I would go. Steve McQueen's car and bullet. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's a nice one. All right, two more. All right, Cameron Belgrade writes: Will we ever see a De Niro Scorsese movie again? Yeah, I mean De Niro Scorsese and I believe Robert or uh, Al Pacino have been talking <laughs> for a while about doing another gangster movie with. Um, not me. <laughs> Leonardo no. Christian Harloff no, no uh, who's who's the guy from Goodfellas uh, Joe Pesci Ray Liotta. yes with Joe Pesci, oh, Pesci. Um, there's been talk for a long time yeah. about a, a mobster movie that was, I think is based on a true story they've been talking about doing it for years now put the still Caprio the in there too man but they're, they're still talking about it so I, I think eventually that movie's going to happen I sure think. why not I would like to see that yeah I think it's going to happen too I think it's, it's a, gr a greatest hits type thing we were just talking about with J.K. Rowling you have yeah. them all come back together again and then use the new talent that he's using as well with the T DiCaprio and that's why De Niro's doing like Dirty Grandpa on all these other poopy movies because he knows he's got he's that got one it. in the bag yeah. I got that one in the bag I'm just yeah. gonna collect some that is another one uh, the actors that you confuse <laughs> to each other uh, uh, Joe Pesci and Idris Elba all the time cannot just uh, get the two straightened out uh, alright last question Jonathan Peck writes, what movies do you think will be a surprise box office hit in 2016 I don't underestimate ID for the BFG and Warcraft well, I, I don't think anybody's underestimating Warcraft or uh, BFG could be one that flies under the radar. Actually, yeah, very much. I think there are a lot of people expecting ID4. Well, it's not called ID4 anymore. It's Independence Day yeah. 2. Uh, Whatever. Electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> um, I think there are a lot of people underselling that movie. And I'm going to tell you right now, that movie's going to open big. BFG? Not, no, no uh, Independence Day. Independence Day. It is not going to open to 200 million big. Don't get me wrong. But it will open big. And uh, now whether or not it's going to be good or bad, who knows? We're going to have to wait and is see. Is it opening on July 4th? 
That's a good question. Because if it's opening sure. on July fourth, I'd get it. I think it would just make money off of that. Yeah, alone. I think so too. But if it's like May thirteenth, forget it. I think it's gonna be a giant bomb. I think it's an easier. I think it's it is summertime, but I think it's easier to, to like the movies in that summertime could have June twenty fourth by the June. way. Yeah, that's a so week or two before July fourth. I think it's okay. do well. I'll tell you one that I think is gonna not do mega numbers, but I think it's gonna do better, and especially the fact that it still has a relatively unknown, even though big stars in it as well. Um, Eddie the Eagle. I think Eddie the Eagle is going to wind up making a little bit more than people thought. I think this it's going to be a feel-good film. I think so, and I think it's going to have a little of that, even though he's direct, he's producing it. I think it's got a little bit of that Vaughn magic right now. Because mm -hmm. look at First Class, and and also First Class Kick Ass. Even though the first one didn't make money, it still became a kind of a a big hit around, I guess, for fans as well too. Um, so I think Eddie the Eagle might turn out to be one people are talking about. Not a mega hit, just something that people are, are talking. The about. trailer has been the trailer is yeah. very good. It's it, the trailer got people talking. It's yeah. a feel good kind yep. of trailer. Funny, you're immediately cheering for the guy and the whole bit. And yeah. It's going to do well in Canada because that was in the Calgary Olympics that that happened. I still remember. I was a little kid when that all went down in Calgary, but. Everybody was talking about Eddie the Eagle. Yeah. He was the story of those Olympics. And I think you're right. I think it's going to carry more than some people think. All right, folks, that'll do it for us for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, don't forget, lots of great films playing out our friends over at AMC Theaters. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for all of your theater showtime and, of course, your movie ticket information. Make sure you're bookmarking our website, Collider.com, keeping you up to date on everything going on in the world of entertainment. And make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want to thank, first of all, the people sitting at the table with me. Sitting over here, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? Well, you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp, and you can get my film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, by going to tdoslwh.com. Support independent film. See you later. Killer shirt, by the way. Oh, sitting crawl, over here, Mr. Crawl. <laughs> Mr. Christian Harlock. Chris, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me every Thursday, Collider Jedi Council. We have another great one this week. Make sure you check out that show. If you're not already, make sure you hashtag on Twitter, Collider Jedi Council. Get your questions on the air and also follow me twitter and instagram at christian harloff and schnepp i forgot to mention tomorrow we've got a very special guest on collider heroes yes we've got the creator of deadpool rob life wow. wow. he'll be cool. on as our very That's special right. guest so forgot to pimp it let's cool. check it out tomorrow right around five o'clock or something it'll be dropping awesome and of course our lovely host today the very funny talented and full ticket price buying <laughs> ashley mova ashley where can people find you Shit. online Shit. on twitter <laughs> and on instagram at ashley mova happy monday guys and of course you can follow me on my very social media networks on uh facebook and on twitter just at john campy and by the way it's it's eminent anytime now keep following me on my social media the release of my book uh the pride is imminent keep your eyes open there i will keep you guys up to date so that'll do it for us guys for collider video thanks for joining us and until until next time, bye-bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.